and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysing, my partner, Malik Hill, and uh, we're back from the Pistons' home opener last week, a week ago. No more special guests, unfortunately. No more hot takes from the Chris Pappas. Uh, but now we're into the NBA season. Things are going good. How are you enjoying it so far, Malik? It has been weird. Uh... Teams that will be bad are playing great. Teams that will be really good are playing bad. The Lakers are hilarious, which might be like the highlight of the season so far. Mm -hmm. The Pistons are one and three, and that's good. And we saw their only win. Yes, we were we were at that electric game. Saw highlights from Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran. Mm -hmm. Franz Wagner and Paolo will be a force. Should be. I won't say will be. Yeah. Should be a force in Orlando for a long time. That's if Orlando can get it together. Yeah, but they have the players in place. It's a it's been a weird start, but it's been entertaining. Mm-hmm. It has. Uh, just funny enough, like teams that we talked about last week about being bottom of the barrel: Hornets two and one, Knicks two and one, Spurs three and one, Jazz, Utah three and one, three and one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Portland is four and zero, oh, which yeah. they might be decent. Yes, but yeah, four and zero oh start. Dame's looking like Dame. So things are all over the place. I know it's only, you know, we're a week into the NBA season, but at the same time, you can already start seeing things that are just kind of wild and don't make sense. 76ers, one and three. Um, and they've gotten good production out of James Harden and Joel Embiid. So it is what it is. Uh, I want to just take a couple minutes to talk about the Pistons real quick. They're looking good so far. Obviously, they're one and three, so they're struggling to seal the deal, it feels like. The home opener was when they got their win. They looked really bad for the first uh, quarter and a half, maybe two quarters. Got it going more so in the second half. Kind of pulled away a little bit uh, at one point and finished off the Magic. Now, it feels like in their last three games, have started really hot, had an early lead in almost every game, and blown it by the second half. So that's kind of the one problem that I have so far with the Pistons. Just seems like, you know, young new team kind of struggling to finish off games for the most part. Um, The new additions, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Bojan Bogdanovich are all playing quite good, actually. Uh, Bogdanovich, I think, is our leading scorer right now. And... The only concern is that Cade Cunningham is struggling a little bit. His numbers are okay, but they're not like what they were at the end of last season. His shooting percentages are down, which is just a little nerve-wracking. I still think they're giving Isaiah Stewart maybe a little too many shots. Too much of a green light. Yeah. Um, Not that he can't make it. We've seen him hit threes and stuff now. Uh, and I, I do think it's going to turn out better than the Andre Drummond experience a few years ago when they tried to let him shoot threes. But I, I don't need, I don't think I need Isaiah Stewart to be a focal point of this offense. Like it's just not, he doesn't need to be getting 11 shots a game, which is kind of what he's been around. And maybe that's in part due to, you know, livers just getting back. Alec Burke's not back yet. Marvin Bagley, not back yet. I'm hoping that's more so the case. But we'll see. Um, what have you seen out of the Pistons that you like or don't like so far in these this small, small sample size? I mean, outside of a few negatives, the biggest negative is probably the the Killian Hayes experiment will probably be done soon. I mean, yeah, he's on the level of like a mid-major point guard, and this is his third year in the league now. He hasn't made any progress in terms of like any, having any offensive skill. He can still pass. He can still defend some, but yeah. Kevin Knox, he needs to go soon. He needs to go. He's mostly playing because Isaiah Livers is hurt and Marvin Bagley. But, yeah, yeah. He, he's not a major contributor. He's a guy that's going to be out very soon. He did only get three minutes last night. He had three fouls in those three minutes. So yeah. Also, Hamadou Diallo, he played some in the first game. Is he dealing with injury also? It seems like he's, like, in and out of the lineup constantly. He played 17 minutes last night. Okay, that's Seven good. points, seven rebounds. That's that's good. That's good. I, I think he's one that probably needs more minutes. I, I agree. Because against the Pacers. It confuses me why, like, we don't see him more. Yeah, against the Pacers, 
six minutes, 0 of 2, two rebounds, two assists. But it seems like when he gets in, he plays hard. Yeah. And I would rather him play more than this weird rotation of them playing Corey Joseph and Killian Hayes at the same time. Like to me, I that agree just, 100%. That just feels weird. Yeah. Again, maybe it's because of the injuries, so our rotations are all kind of messed up. But I feel like yeah. he Alec needs Burks to... and Corey Joseph would probably be playing a lot more of those second unit minutes. Yeah. Mixed with Killian Hayes because they still want to see if he has something. Right. So it's kind of a wait and see um, till we get our full complement of players, I would think. Um, we play Atlanta tonight. So that's probably going to get another loss, most likely. Going to be crushing defeat. Atlanta's looking pretty good. I think Trey Young and Deontay Murray are going to be solid together. Um, yeah. Also, Jaden, Jaden Ivy, Jalen Duran, thumbs up so far. Loving what they're showing, their energy. They're they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And Troy Weaver, just seeing that he hit on another two. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I think it's another thing to bring up too like don't get too high of expectations of this team don't do what we did with the lions or whatever yeah they're young exciting the pistons are getting better but they're not there yet so we just have to be patient but i think they're on the right track still so we'll have to wait and see um college football we didn't really talk about it last week um we briefly mentioned Tennessee beat Alabama, which was crazy. Um, and then this past week, um, nothing too crazy happened in the past weekend. Yeah, there there were a few quality games, nothing crazy. Yeah, the only one that, like, for me that was exciting um, was that Syracuse-Clemson game. Unfortunately, Syracuse kind of blew it in the fourth quarter. They had a chance to be yeah. seven. In terms of overall drama, it was probably the most entertaining game. But Oregon UCLA was probably the best matchup. Right. Two quality teams. This is probably the best the back the Pac twelve has been in years. Yeah. And that kind of sucks because they might not be a conference anymore in a few years. USC and UCLA will be gone. But yeah, yeah Oregon, Bo Nix, that offense, they're for real. And after that Georgia loss, they've just gotten better every week. Mm-hmm. They're a top ten team now. They beat UCLA forty five to thirty. It was Bo Nix's best game of his career. Uh, they're they're just they're firing on all cylinders right now. And Dan Lanning is doing a really good job with that team. UCLA is still good. They just took an L to a really good team at Oregon. Oklahoma State beat Texas. Texas still isn't back. Let's calm down. Quinn Ewers had a horrible showed, game. He showed that he's human. Yes. After looking he, like, he missed a lot of open passes and his receivers dropped several passes. But B. John Robinson, I'm just going to bring him up every week because he's a top 10 pick. Mm-hmm. He is a monster of a running back. He's a guy that a lot of teams are going to want. He had another big game, but Oklahoma State ended up winning it. Uh, Penn State got a get back game against Minnesota after that excruciating loss to Michigan. They beat Minnesota 45-17. Minnesota's backup played, but still good to get a blowout in conference. And then TCU probably would have lost to Kansas State if Adrian Martinez played the entire game. Mm -hmm. But he went down halfway through the first quarter. They still were able to build a 28-10 lead over TCU with their backup in. But then he got hurt also, and the third stringer came in. He threw a pick. They lost all momentum at that point, and TCU ended up taking it. They've played, TCU has played a string of teams where their starters have gotten hurt like four straight games. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of luck, but they're also a good team. Right. So, yeah, it's a lot of interesting stuff going on. LSU uh, beat Ole Miss when they were number seven at the time. They really weren't the seventh best team in the country. But a really great win for LSU. Jaden Daniels probably had his best game of his career. Ohio State played decent. Mm -hmm. If they played a better team, it probably would have been closer. But Iowa... They have to do something. They they got they got to do something. Mm-hmm. Kirk Ferentz and what he's allowing his son Brian Ferentz to do to that offense, it's just terrible. Yeah, I mean Spencer Petras, forty nine passing yards, two picks. They started it started the game with Spencer Petras rolling out to the right out of the shot to the left out of the shotgun, and he just threw it right to a Ohio State DB like mm-hmm. to start the game. It they they put in their backup Alex Padilla later on, but it was too late basically. They had no momentum. Iowa's a disgrace right now. <laughs> their fan, I feel bad for their fan base 
Like, their defense has been good enough for the past, like, decade for them to win eight to ten games a season. And Kirk Ferentz has just let the offense fall every single year. It's it like it might be almost like worse than what D'Antonio did with MSU in his last few years because this is it's depressing watching how bad their offense is and how he just accepts it and he says his coaches are fine and he trusts Spencer Petrus. It, it's delusional at this point. Mm-hmm. So Iowa, I hope they make a change somewhere because it's it's just bad. They got to find something. But yeah. Ohio State wins again. They blow out Iowa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not too much is changed in the rankings uh it's still georgia ohio state tennessee michigan clemson alabama um with some minor adjustments here and there like you said ole miss kind of falling off um and then tulane ranked 23rd shout out tulane man always kind of cool to see they're having their best season since i believe i watched some of the game i think since like 1997 Mm -hmm. they went undefeated that year that was the one undefeated season they've had in their program history So if they were able to pull this off, this would be huge for their program. Willie Fritz has been one of the better underrated coaches in the country for a while now, and his name might be more on the map after the season if they keep this up. Yeah. And now on to the main course. One more thing. Okay. Texas A&M is an embarrassment. They gave Jimbo Fisher that huge contract. He's he's, he's just ruining that program. Hey, they got a big win, though. Shouts out to South South Carolina, who's 5-2. With a offense that honestly isn't that great, and they're just figuring it out. Shane Beamer, good for you. Now on to uh, yeah, the real meat and potatoes, if you will. The meat and potatoes. Um, it's Michigan, Michigan State this week. Another year. Another, another year. Part, another edition of this rivalry. But we're at the big house. Yeah. Under the lights. I'm excited to be under the lights. Last year they were under the lights. They lost in the big house. Ah. John O'Corn was the quarterback. Michigan State Ooh. fans, they they look back on that fondly. John O'Corn. Yeah. It's a name I haven't thought of in a long time. It's a name I don't think about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and most Michigan fans don't like to. Hmm. All right, Malik. How are you feeling about this game? Not I'm- good, Joey. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling good. Michigan has a lot of hype. They smack Penn State. Mm-hmm. They're a really good team, but this man, this, I'll, I'll this, read game, you, this game. I'll read you the lines, Malik. The spread is plus 23. <sighs> That's not good. It's not good. <laughs> I don't like this. In a rivalry game, Michigan 7-0. and Michigan State's 3-4. and Listen. Okay, so. J.J. McCarthy almost, I mean, he's only a couple hundred yards behind Peyton Thorne. A way better touchdown to interception ratio. Yeah. Blake Corum is accounting for more yards and touchdowns than Michigan State running backs. Michigan combined. is a very good team, and Michigan State isn't very good. Let's, let's just make it that simple. But it's the rivalry game. But it's the rivalry game. Listen, 2018, Michigan wins at MSU. Wait, that was 2016. Yeah, they win at MSU when MSU isn't good at all, and MSU keeps it close. Mm-hmm. 2017, I think MSU won. It's this this rival. I, I Michigan Michigan should win. I'm not going to guarantee anything. I'm mm-hmm. not going to bet. A, I'm not going to put up a score. I don't know how this game is going to go. I would love for this game to go like it did in 2019, when Michigan was much better and MSU wasn't good, and Michigan just put them away. Mm-hmm. I would love for it to go that like that, but. I, I Mel Tucker and they, that offense, it, the running backs don't scare me, but they've gotten a little better. Their defense isn't very good. Mm-hmm. That's that's the one. The MSU's defense just isn't. They still have Jacoby Winman, but they have injuries, and Michigan yep. should win. So Michigan should win by at least two touchdowns. Let's just go back through this rivalry. Just since yeah. I'm going to go back to like 2002. Crazy. Oh, enough. boy. Michigan went on a stretch of just dominating the rivalry. The, the era I grew up in that that established what I thought about this rivalry. But even when Michigan was dominant in the rivalry, 2002, 49 to three blowout. Then 2003, 27 to 20. There, there have been yeah, there were closer ones and in between there. Keep in mind, this is when Michigan State was not a good team. 
2003, 27-20. 2004, triple overtime, 45-37. The Braylon to Edwards game. To yeah. 37. Michigan State was honestly just on top of them during regulation. 2005, 34-31 Michigan in overtime. Yeah. 2006, 31-13. 2007, 28, 24. These are all Michigan wins, but each being like a score. The records never matter. The rankings never matter, except for those like Brady, Hoke, D'Antonio years where it didn't matter because D'Antonio was just smashing Michigan. Yeah. And just thinking of like this 23 point spread. The last time one of these teams won by 23 points. Well, t- besides 2019, I guess that was the big blowout. Was well, all the way back to 2013 well, yeah, when, when Michigan State won them, yeah. 29 to six. That game was ugly for Michigan. And after Michigan had won six in a row back in 2002, Michigan State came back, won four in a row. Then Michigan won in 2012. State won three in a row. Then Michigan won in 2016. 2017 was Michigan State. 2018 was Michigan. 19 was Michigan, and Michigan State has won in 20 and 2021. And this I is there's no explaining the last well the last two, I mean the last one Kenneth Walker, who's lighting it up in the NFL right now as a rookie. Mm-hmm. He was he was just a generational guy that took over. Yeah, and 2020 I I don't like I I've said this before I don't count that season. It was just nonsense, <laughs> outside of the top teams. And I just point that out because I think it's kind of fun with this rivalry that I don't have. Yes, I play the Michigan State Michigan State side on a lot of our debates and things like that. But at the same time, at the end of the day, I ultimately don't care. I like when these teams are both good. I like when the rivalry can be fun. And even when both teams aren't good, the rivalry tends to be fun, as you can see by this list of crazy close games. Neither Sometimes one team is supposed to be way better than the other. Um it's just it's just interesting to me. Um and I agree with you like I don't know I guess I fully I don't fully know how Michigan State wins. I have an idea. You somehow figure out how to stop Blake Quorum. You do that, I think you have a chance. I think realistically, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, it's a simple game plan of can you stop Blake Quorum? Then you have a chance. But, but that's easier said than done. And also, the the secondary, the, the secondary. I I I can never get past that. Yeah, but like Ag- against teams that don't have explosive passing games, like Wisconsin, they figured out a way to win that game two mm-hmm. weeks ago. Michigan's offense, passing offense, isn't extremely explosive, but they've shown they can get what they want when they need it. Yeah. And they can just pick a team apart when they have to. This game, I think it most likely will be close going into the third. But I think in the second half, Michigan separates. I said I wouldn't predict a score, but you know what? I'll I'll just go ahead and do it. I will go Michigan. Michigan wins 41 to 24. Hmm. Okay. It could end up being like 35-24. Things get weird in this rivalry. But because this is more like 2019 where there's a clear similarity like between the differences in teams mm-hmm. and the strength of each team. Yeah, I'm 35-24. Okay. 35. I think it gets weird in several moments. Michigan State might get a ton- turnover or two, might get some weird stops, might block a field goal, might – it sack JJ McCarthy while he's running around and get a, like a strip sack touchdown or something. This game always has weird stuff. Yeah. So I'll go with 35 24 Michigan. Yeah. Woo. That plus 1,000 money line is very interesting for Michigan <laughs> State. Very intriguing. I won't take it. But um, if Mark, if Mark D'Antonio was coaching this team, I, I might just, I might have taken Michigan State. So. What Just because all the pressures would be on Michigan. What I'm going to say Michigan State needs to do, just ditch the running game. I don't care. That's what they did in 2020. Just just ditch it, In basically. that ridiculous year where they just threw it nonstop at Rocky Lombardi. Because I think there's just almost no way they can try to 
play a slow, methodical game with Michigan because that's exactly what Michigan would love to do. Um, and if you give Blake Corum more chances than Elijah Collins, Jalen Berger, like anybody from Michigan State, Blake Corum's going to come out on top. You so, haven't even brought up Donovan Edwards yet, which no. is the, yeah. So just scrap that. You have, in my opinion, the better talent in Keon Coleman and Jaden Reed. Try to use it. Like you said, I, I, I've said multiple times, Peyton Thorne has been quite a bit disappointment from what I expected him to be this season. This would be the time for him to prove himself. Peyton Thorne, go out there and just sling it. He he didn't play very well last year either. No. Can, yeah, he, he didn't. They were down big mostly because Peyton Thorne just wasn't getting it done. Yeah. And Kenneth Walker just. It, he went nuts. He went crazy. Yeah. And we can't expect that. We have to change that game plan. Get away yeah. from it. I, I I agree. I think they need to come out with the, the game plan Indiana had against Michigan where they just came out, quick plays, complete a pass, get back to the line, complete a pass, and keep it going. Mm-hmm. No no slow stuff. You go and you go and you go. You take deep shots. You got to get lucky. Yeah. You got to get lucky several times in this game to win this game. You got to win 50-50 balls more than Michigan just – Flat out plays their game. Mm-hmm. You got to win on those deep shots that are just like, and that's we'll see what happens. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to win on those. Keon Coleman, he's huge. He should be able to. I would think, potentially, he'd be able to win a good amount. Jaden Reed, like that's what those guys are there for. Um, so that's like yeah. where I would expect them to get a chance. I guess. Man, it. It it would have it was it would have to take a lot because that Michigan State's O line versus Michigan State's D line I think is a mismatch in this. Mm-hmm. Michigan's overall D line is better than it was last year. They don't have the two superstars on the outside, but they have a complete unit. And Michigan State's O line has been banged up and below average to bad mm-hmm. for most of the season. Yep. So, giving giving your quarterback time. Can they can they do that consistently? I don't know. I don't think they can for four full quarters against Michigan's defense. Mm-hmm. I think they probably could for like two and a half quarters, but the dam will break eventually, and that's why I think Michigan wins. It yeah. doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to get him to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think I agree with you. I think Michigan will win this game, but I'm just hoping. This would be my prediction. A lot would have to go wrong for Michigan, and a lot would have to go so right for Michigan State. It would have, it has to be like the 2020 game almost. Yeah. The over-under is 55. I think it's going to go over, and I think it would have to go over for any chance for Michigan State to win. I think it has to be a shootout if they're going to yeah. win. Um, My prediction, I think, is going to be... I won 35-24. And I'm thinking it's gonna be closer. And the like that 24, it could be like 35-17 Michigan, mm-hmm. and the Michigan State scores a garbage time touchdown. Like yeah. it, I think it could be something like that. I'm thinking something like a 38-34. I wanted to push it to like 45-38, but I feel like that might be a little too high. But it's possible. This is. It's rivalry this is, gets crazy. This could theoretically be JJ's biggest game. Michigan State, like, Mel, throw everything you have at JJ McCarthy. Forget about Blake Corum. It's one of those things where it's like, let Michigan play their game. You play a, something different. Don't play to their game. Play your own game. Blake Corum's going to get his. He's gotten it all season. So. Do everything in your power to make J.J. uncomfortable. Show him what this rivalry is all about and make something happen. Last year, Cade That's McNamara think- had his best career game against them. Yeah. So there has to be. And he wasn't very – he's not nowhere near as mobile as J.J. is. Mm-hmm. They could barely get to Cade. You have to figure out a way to make them uncomfortable. JJ's still young. He's to, ha- to me, that's the most challenging part of this game for Michigan State. Mm-hmm. How do you make them uncomfortable? Right. How? Because you, you've had a hard time figuring it out yeah. this season. It's Obviously, it's through JJ. 
that you have to make uncomfortable, how do you get to that point? How do you figure out how to get pressure on him? That's easier said than done, yeah. too. But I, I don't doubt Jacoby Winman could get two to three sacks in this game. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll call some blitzes where he'll get to J.J. Yeah. And I, I think that how do they capitalize after that? Sorry for interrupting you. No, you how do they how do they capitalize after they make that play? Yeah, when it's second and seventeen, after Jacoby Winman get, get, uh, makes a play, are you just going to trust your defense to okay, let's settle into our regular defense now? Hmm. And that's when things go wrong for Michigan State. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I think you got to play. You got to play differently to show something different. You're three and four, like. There's nothing at this point in this season. There's nothing for Michigan State to lose. The only advantage that gives that makes it very scary to play them, because Michigan Michigan's lost the last two years, and now it's almost in the same position. Michigan sitting undefeated. Michigan State's kind of got. Well, last year they had things to play for. This year they they're have, playing for pride right now. Yeah, this year it's like we got to show up for the rivalry game. Yeah. And they tend to do that. Does it always give them the win? No. But I think they got to take a lot of risks. Blitz the crap out of them. Try to get stops. And when you're on offense, take every deep shot you can. I just, just play a risky, risky game. Who cares? If you get blown out by Michigan, that was expected. Unload the clip. But if you, have a chance, <laughs> if you have a chance to hang with them, by doing some crazy stuff, go for it. Like, this is the time. So, again, I expect actually a pretty good game. I don't think – I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout for once. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll be terrible either. But be because they don't have that game breaker like last, last year, it was a magical season. Mm-hmm. But I think all Michigan State fans can, can agree that last year's team was better than this one. They are yeah. more consistent overall. Even with Kenneth, even with Kenneth Walker going crazy, they were a better team. It's easier. And Michigan s- jumped out on them and was controlling that game. Yeah, last it's easier year. to set up a game plan when you have a, a a runner that is like Kenneth Walker. Yeah. So, I'm excited for the game. It's going to be good. Hopefully, that's that's all I ever asked for. Just be a good game. Listen, put, I put Malik on edge, please. I am going to. I'm going to put a same game parlay on this one. <laughs> I'm not betting winner. I'm betting yards. Okay. Points and yards. I think we should both go in on this one. I think I'm going to take that plus 23 spread. Listen, let's let's do a podcast parlay. <laughs> let's do this. Okay. Yes. What, are, what are we doing? Let's I I think we go we go Let's go passing yards both way. We, we'll figure this out. Let's not okay. do it on the spot okay. right we'll now. We'll talk yeah. about it later. We'll, we'll figure this out by Saturday and have the perfect mix. We'll make sure to put it in parlay. writing and then we'll yes. talk about it next week. Once we hit, we we'll split the money and we'll go crazy. We'll see how we did. <laughs> Anyway, so big game this weekend for college football. That's going to be a lot of fun. Now on to the NFL. Week eight. Week eight, and uh, we're already just about halfway done with the NFL season. That is wild. Yeah. Crazy to think about. Um, is This season hasn't gone. I don't think anybody's predicted no. how this season has gone. Week seven was Another weird one. Unfortunately, there was quite a few uh, major injuries in week seven. Um, we lo- yeah, some some young talent getting hurt, which stinks. And we'll touch on it when we get to those games in picks. Last week, though, with Chris being our special guest, um, he did all right, but technically he lost. Last place. Uh, Chris got eight correct picks, which, you know, has been pretty around the number that we've yeah, been getting. It's not, it's not bad. So, ultimately, not too bad. But, unfortunately, yet again, Malik and I, both nine picks correct. <laughs> we are <laughs> what in is this? a stalemate what for, is like, this? three weeks. And we have been pretty good at picking different games. Yeah. Um, this is wild. So, yeah. So, here we sit. And now, Malik, your total is at 55, correct? And I am at 58. Oh, man. I, I like the – this is kind of frustrating, but also I like where this is going. This neck and neck yeah, the entire time. So, it's been pretty good. So, starting off with tomorrow's game, Thursday night football. 
This game isn't as interesting as you thought no. it would be a few weeks ago. No, like this, looking at this game, you would be really excited normally. But Baltimore at Tampa Bay, man, Tampa Bay has some problems. It, the biggest storyline of this game might be Tom Brady's life is falling apart. Yeah. That's like the biggest storyline of every Bucks game right now. Mm-hmm. And that's sad. Yeah. It's very sad. Baltimore finally closed off a game, though, last week. They almost blew it again. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they got a win. Lamar Jackson struggled a little bit lately, though. Yeah, Mark Andrews went out, too. Yeah, I think he's Is supposed he, to be back. Yeah, I didn't know what he went out with. Yeah, I haven't gotten a full practice report from, like, today to he know. He is questionable. Okay. The only player out is Ben Cleveland, guard. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll see about that. At some point, you got to expect Tampa Bay to turn it around. But. But it, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't Listen. know. I don't even know how to pick this game because even if Baltimore gets an early lead, all of a sudden they could blow the lead like they've been doing, and then Tampa Bay gets into momentum, then Tampa Bay makes it to the Super Bowl. Like, who knows what happens from this game? This could be a pretty important game for both of these team seasons, honestly. I think it is. I Yeah. The more I talk about it, <laughs> the more I can, can see it. And I've had faith in Tom Brady for almost his entire career. Whenever his team's – have a bit of a fall off. Mm-hmm. He usually gets them back on track. Things are looking different right now. Yeah. His his like his ability to be like a fiery leader, like that Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant type of we're gonna get on the same page because I can't handle I can't take losing. Yeah. We're going we're going to win. Mm. It doesn't look like it's getting to the young guys. No. It looks like he's just a tyrant on the sidelines right now. Mm-hmm. It's changed he doesn't have Gronk to just like be his guy there anymore. This change in head coaches with Todd Bowles seems like it's not doing great. Yeah. There's just no there's no energy. There's no there's no juice with this team. Mm-hmm. And that Panthers lost, man. With no Christian <sighs> McCaffrey. Yeah. Chubba Hubbard and Deontay Foreman, you let them kill you. Phillip Walker had a really good game against that defense. Mm-hmm. I can't trust the Bucks right now. I just can't. Yeah. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin still might put up some stats, but I got to go Ravens. I trust Lamar Jackson to keep getting that team wins. I'm going with the Ravens. All right. Ravens are my team, but I think this is a viable. Well, you go against your guys. I think this is a viable spot to do so. Maybe I can make a lead out of this. I'll go Tampa Bay. Just there's got to be a get right game at some point, right? Although I would love to see them fail, I'm just going to go with, you know, a good 50-50 shot. All right. Then on Sunday early morning in England, I am not getting up for this game. This game game is on ESPN+. Plus. It's not even on NFL Network? Because most of the uh, England games. This is ESPN+, Plus on my app. Wow. I could watch it, but I won't. Who? Is waking up early to watch this. Nope. Outside of Jacksonville and Denver. I've already barely enjoyed getting up for the other Sunday early morning England games. Yuck. Denver at Jacksonville. At Jacksonville. I'm taking Jacksonville. I have no faith in Russell Wilson anymore. I yeah. just don't. He's back for this game, but I'm I'm with you. I, they're giving the reins to Travis Etienne this week. I'm excited yeah. to see what he does. It's wild. They just completely... They, they've they literally given it all to him. Yeah. They, they said, traded James Robinson and just said, it's yours. Yep. I mean, after these past three games, I kind of understand. He's he's becoming the guy everybody thought he was. Right. But, yeah. And he just looks fast. Who is their backup running back at this point? Uh, I don't remember seeing any other running backs. Do they still have – oh, they have Jermichael Hasty. I did not know that. Yeah, because hmm. he had a couple touches like the last couple weeks or something like that. Okay. So – yeah, interesting. Miami at Detroit. Oh, do you, I, I didn't even hear you say I'm taking Jacksonville, too. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miami at Detroit. How how hot is the seat for Dan Campbell? It, it's hot. I, I'm right there. It You know, he had a lot of promise. But over the last few games, there's just been weird. Everything looks like it's just falling apart. Like two, Like three weeks ago, technically. You know, all the fourth downs that he went for, never kicking. 
this past week never like trying to challenge against the Dallas like the weird plays that happened, the questionable calls. Trayvon Diggs, did he get an interception or not? It looked like he did to me, but everybody on the broadcast is like, that's a challenge. Like, you should challenge that. Why wouldn't you challenge that? I agree. Why wouldn't why wouldn't you try it? And then, like, at the end of the game, who knows if it makes a difference either? Jamal Williams fumble, but they should have been on like the inch yard line. Why wouldn't you challenge the spot of the ball? Because that sets up your play calling to probably be a quarterback sneak, I would assume. Who knows? It, it, again, it might not change the outcome of the game. But it's just like, why are you not trying to challenge that stuff as a coach? It to is. me, it's almost like he's backing down like like a couple weeks ago, going for every fourth down, being risky, taking risks. And then this last week, being very safe. Like, choose one. I don't know. It's It's confusing to me. Yeah, it it looks like he's taking shots in the dark right now, mm-hmm. and I I don't know if this is like this could be far fetched. It seems like his if his energy isn't high and he's like full Dan Campbell, mm-hmm. it seems like his coaching ability kind of falls too. Yeah, like it, it's strange. He loses his mojo. Yeah, and. You can't have a coach like that. Yeah. You got to have a guy that's just a consistent, Mm -hmm. I understand these situations. I know these calls. I know where to put my players in the right positions. With him, you go to the sideline, and you need. he's either, like, excited or he's just completely down. There's, like, no middle Mm -hmm. for Dan Campbell. Yeah. And, yeah, that that might not last too too much longer. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah, it seems like it's affecting his decision making. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's another one of those scenarios where, you know, hard knocks made the team look good and kind of gave this illusion that the first Dan few Campbell, weeks made them look good too. Yeah. And that people were like, Oh, Dan Campbell for sure has this whole year to grow. I don't know. He's proven himself that like in certain scenarios he's he's struggling. So yeah, I I'm on board with, you know, putting him on the hot seat that yes, it's a new young team. Granted, we haven't had a Monroe St. Brown, DJ shark, Swift, Swift. Like they've had a lot of injuries and Jared Goff's play is just completely plateaued. So. Yeah. But yeah, that was a weird one too. I mean, his yeah. last three weeks have just been, kind of, he was like been pretty brutal 21 of 26 in the game, but he had two picks, two fumbles, like, He's efficient, but then when he misses, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's unfortunate. Detroit does play better at home, but man, how in the like, if you ever needed a win, the Lions struggle against running backs. Raheem Mostert's getting going. He's one of the fastest backs in the league. And Tua, the Lions, Tua, the, the Dolphins had that hot start against Pittsburgh, but then they kind of they just went flat for the rest of the game. Yeah, but Pittsburgh has guys like Minka Fitzpatrick and. Casey Hayward and all those guys. And, like, you know, they have a secondary that can kind of stop Tyreek Hill. The Lions do not. Um, so I'm terrified to see what Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell can do against this team. I, I can't pick Detroit anymore. It- it's all over. I don't even think I can pick them against Chicago coming up. They're getting better, yeah. I, <laughs> I want to pick Detroit for some reason. Well, I, I'm going to go Miami. Okay. I, I can't take that shot. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Carolina at Atlanta. I think this is a fun game. Car- Out of nowhere. Carolina Why all is of the sudden- NFC South so bad? I don't know. Carolina all of a sudden has some juice, even though they traded away Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, got rid of their coaches. I don't know. All of a sudden, Chuba Hubbard's playing a little better. I don't know if he's going to play this week because he did get banged up. Deonta Foreman looks solid. I mean, he looked solid with Tennessee last year. All of a sudden, P.J. Walker found D.J. Moore for a touchdown. And then Atlanta, man. They are so – I know everybody says this. They are so frustrating to watch. I saw something on – I've seen something on Twitter several times in the past week. There are Falcons fans and football fans overall saying, Arthur Smith isn't drawing a place for Kyle Pitts and Drake London because Marcus Mariota is the quarterback. He can't get it to them. Mm Mm-hmm. Aren't you just supposed to be able to draw up stuff for them to be, get open like easily yeah. in the open field? I and watched their big body receivers. It mm-hmm. shouldn't be hard 
to yeah. get them looks, even with Marcus Mariota. And then why don't you play Desmond Ritter? Yeah. If Marcus, what I don't, I don't get it. I've heard so many people say, well, the, they can't get it to them. So no, I watched this. I watched Atlanta play a lot last week against Cincinnati. They got carved up by Cincinnati on defense. And I thought, okay, maybe we finally get to see Atlanta's passing game. No. They're not trying. They stuck to exactly their game plan, even when they're down 20-some yeah. points. It was wild. Like, Kyle Pitts constantly lining up like George Kittle as a blocker. Now, it's good that maybe they can use Kyle Pitts as a blocker like that, too. But even when San Francisco's down, that's when they start to run plays to George Kittle. Kyle Pitts had three catches for nine yards. Now, I get it. Like, technically... They could still win this division the way that they're playing. They could get a wild card the way they're playing. But, man, I just feel bad for Kyle Pitts and Drake London because it feels like right now, even though they could become a playoff team, their talents are not being utilized to their highest potential. Why don't start the quarterback you drafted and throw it to your draft picks? Because they're in games. They're technically winning games. Use the guys you've. You put everything into these young players. I know. These superstars, that guys that can be superstars. It's om- to, I've heard some people say it. It's almost like Arthur Smith is like trying to slap everybody in the face that it's not about them. It's about their team and about him and whatnot. Okay. But, <laughs> All right, Arthur. But look like. So you're making it about yourself is what you're but doing. But just think like they are in games and doing well the way they're playing. Just running the ball, having Marcus Mariota throw it 17 times. They're about to get Cordero Patterson back, who's hardly even caught the ball this year when last year, like, his strength was being able to run and catch the ball. Just think of, like, the weapons. If they were able to utilize the weapons, you might win more. And you could still play more of a run-heavy offense. Just a little bit less. Like, throw the ball a little bit more. Drake London proved in the first couple games he can get touchdowns. Kyle Pitts last year had 1,000 yards. As a rookie, that's never been done before. Now he has, I don't even know, I don't think, I think he has less than 100 yards on the season. Oh, I'm about to check. Um, he has one touchdown. And it's just bad. Um, so I don't know. They're the most frustrating team in the league. Drake London leads them with 315 yards. And Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts has 178 receiving yards. Okay, so it's more than I thought. That's ridiculous. 178 receiving yards. Yeah. Uh. It's 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 rough. I get it. They're winning games. It's sort of working, whatever they're doing. But After all of that, I'll still take the Falcons in this game. Okay. I'll take Carolina because I like think Carolina is playing with a lot of heart and pride. Yeah. But I, th- I think the Falcons, just, just throw it to your guys. Just get it to your weapons. Yeah. Use... It's, Your weapons. It's seven weeks. I don't think they're going to. <laughs> um, and for me, I think Atlanta's defense is struggling lately. Um, they've You're had, not wrong. They've had some injuries. A.J. Terrell is not as good as he was last year. Um, they're just having some issues there. Um, Carolina's defense has looked better, so I'm going to go with Carolina. Chicago at Dallas. This is actually interesting after that Monday night game. Can you really go with the stretch of Justin Fields beating <sighs> that defense? I feel like Micah Parsons is going to. They are going to bait him into trying to run several times. Maybe. And he's going to just meet Micah face-to-face. Maybe. And it won't be fun. Also, their their defense has just been awesome. Hmm. Like, but really da- like Dallas's offense hasn't been all that great yet. It hasn't. Dak, But their, know, their defense keeps him alive. Now that Dak has a week under his belt, maybe he's better. But I don't believe in Chicago's offense enough to give them this one. I just If it was in Chicago, I would give them more of a chance. But mm-hmm. I, I'm going with Dallas. Okay. I'm going to go with Chicago. I'm just going to ride the wave. It might be a is risky one. Is there a wave? One. It might be a is risky one. Is there a wave one. yet? Eh. I think we still might just be swimming around in the pool, man. <laughs> it's a risky one, but... We're, I, not, I, we're not quite in the ocean. I still have that little, the little cushion I can use. Okay. Arizona and Minnesota. That's another weird one. We saw DeAndre Hopkins come back. I didn't watch a single highlight of that when they had... They only targeted DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> I'm about to look at the stats right now. They like won. I haven't paid a bit of attention to that game. I think they would have lost. Ten catches, 103 yards. If they didn't have two pick sixes, they would have lost the game. Because Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton 361, four touchdowns, three picks. His That's three a, picks were really well. Yeah. Two of them were not his fault. 
30 one, for 47 is like a good game. One was 100% his fault. But honestly, Andy Dalton was carving up the, the Cardinals secondary. That's why I just, yeah. Besides the pick sixes, which I know are huge. They, they should have won. Like, That's what yes, it looks like. Yes, they would have won. So you still can't trust Arizona. So Arizona is still weird, and I'm not sure where to put them. Minnesota coming off their bye. How long does Minnesota, like, ride this? They're not about to go, like, 15-2. and two. NFC North is bad. They are. But the NFC is looking bad. Minnesota still has to be Minnesota a few weeks. I'm just going to go with a weird Arizona win. Okay. I'm wow. going to go with a low score in, like, like, 21 to, like, 17. Just strange game. I think these Arizona. two teams are being in a shootout. Um, they could. So I'll go with Minnesota. I well, just, you, we've also seen Minnesota just have those games where they yeah, barely can do anything. They can collapse, that's for sure. Uh, Las Vegas at New Orleans. Shouts out to the comeback of Josh Jacobs. He's they tried real to just good. they tried to give up on him, and I never understood why. Yeah, I was surprised like, I, when they said people were saying he was a bust all of a sudden. Like beginning of the season, they were talking about going straight to Zamir White using Amir Abdullah more. They tried that for one game, and then now they've gone really run heavy. Taking a little pressure off of Derek Carr and Devontae Adams. And Josh Jacobs has had over 140 yards in each of the last three games. He's looked good. In New Orleans, they're looking all right, too. Um, so I'm still kind of confused on how to rate this game. It doesn't look like Jameis is going to be back for this game. Uh, sounds like Andy Dalton's going to get another start. But he is supposed to get Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry back. So they will have their full slate of weapons. Can I pick first? Go for it. Because I'll probably pick the opposite. <laughs> I am going to go with the Raiders. Okay. I think they're figuring it out. Derek Carr has played well with, hey, a balanced offense. That helps a quarterback, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. They're playing more balanced football. Derek Carr is playing cleaner football. Josh Jacobs is just doing what he does mm-hmm. when he has good blocking and open field. And I think they just keep riding a wave, like you said, mm-hmm. a small wave. Yeah. I hope so. I, I like Vegas. I like them as a team. Um, but I will go New Orleans. I think this is a close enough game to take the opposite. I think this could be one of those scenarios where New Orleans defense is maybe just a little bit better. Could slow do- down Josh Jacobs a little bit. Um, so I'll go with them. New England at the Jets. Oh, man, I feel bad for the Jets. This is a real – this is a this is a strange matchup. Mm-hmm. The Jets just lost Brees Hall to the season towards ACL. Super sad after he had four rushes for 74 yards and a touchdown. He's he's like he could be a generational guy mm-hmm. if he gets back healthy. Yeah. Um, so it's unfortunate for them, but they did go out and trade for James Robinson. So they got James Robinson. I, I kind of feel bad for Michael Carter too. He just cannot take over for that backfield at any point. Uh, so maybe he hasn't proven himself, but um, Jets are just finding ways to win. Zach Wilson not really throwing the ball. You know what? Yeah, you, you keep going. You keep going. Oh, I was going to go over to New England at this point of like Mac Jones versus Bailey Zappi. It's 2001 that, all over again. Drew Bledsoe versus Tom Brady. It's so and weird. And they're younger. And in the postgame stuff, people were asking about, uh, asking Belichick, like, who decided to go to Bailey Zappi? I did. did. Well, what was the plan there? I chose to put him in. Like, they, nobody they, else knew that that was going to happen. They asked him if it had something to do with Mac Jones' play, and he said no. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what was it then? Matt Patricia didn't know that was the going on, and nothing. Belichick just said, put in Bailey. Yeah. Also, they put in Bailey, and that play calling kind of changed up. Mm-hmm. It looked, <laughs> They opened it up for him. Yeah, it was – I'm not sure what's going on. And he looked good for that drive and maybe the rest of the first half. Second half, though, he didn't really do anything. So, I don't know. It sounds like they're still in good good spirits, but they got a lot of things to work out. In the midst of this QB battle, I'm going to go with the Patriots' defense because okay. Zach Wilson is scaring Jets fans, and I never bought into the hype. I don't think you did either. No. I still hope he's good, but, boy, he's not looking good. No. Even they've, when he has time. They've looked better with Joe Flacco. <laughs> and have. I don't say that as a bias. They have, which is a problem. Even when he has, like, time, it's just not working out great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I think even in New York, I think it's just going to be a weird atmosphere in that stadium Mm -hmm. with James Robinson getting a lot of carries and Brees Hall out. 
Well, Michael Carter might get a lot of the carries. So yeah, they're going to tr- try to figure out the running back situation. I think that New England defense is going to make it a problem for Zach Wilson and the Patriots win. Yeah. I'm going to go same reasoning, but I'm going to go with the Jets. I think it's going to be a weird <laughs> defensive game. Uh, Jets defense is much improved. Um, I think they can maybe slow it down. I feel like their running game has gotten it going too. New England's running game is going pretty good with Ramon J. Stevenson. So it might be a slow, boring game, but I think the Jets, they might just keep winning. It's it's weird to even say that. Pittsburgh at Philadelphia. We're not picking Pitt, right? Yeah. Okay. Philadelphia. I, I think half of Kenny Pickett's picks aren't his fault. No. But it's just not looking good. Yeah. I, I feel like they're kind of throwing – like, they cannot it's get the run situation. game. They cannot get the run game going. I think they're yeah. forcing him to throw it a lot more. And to be fair, like, Deontay Johnson hasn't looked as good as he has in the years past. He's not getting as open, so it's been a little harder. Um, they got to figure out a way to scheme up better plays for, like – like, they have Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, and Chase Claypool. Now, it sounds like Chase Claypool will, will probably be on the move uh, towards the trade deadline. There's been a lot of rumors there, but – I don't know. Philadelphia is just rolling right now. Tennessee at Houston. I can't. Just, just Tennessee no. by default. Yeah. You know, there was Tennessee a, a point where I thought Houston was, like, decent and they would be, like, competitive, kind of like they were last year, where they would stay in a lot as of games. As long as Lovey Smith is their coach, I can't. Davis Mills has. He had his best game last week and it still didn't matter. Yeah, he's taken a step back from last year. Like, last year, towards the end, he was, like, decent. Like, looked yeah. like maybe he could be something. Um, not it, anymore. It sucks because Damian Pierce is, he looks like he's the truth. He's for real. Yeah. And they have good young talent like Derek Stingley and they got some other good guys. Nico but. Collins is kind of coming into his own. Yeah. Uh, I think Brandon Cooks is another one that might be on the trade deadline. Uh, might be on the move. So that'd be interesting too. Um, here we go. Taylor Heineke versus Sam Ellinger. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. Listen. Washington at Indianapolis. I'm going. I'm going with Sam Ellinger. <laughs> this is literally based off of like 15 plays in the preseason. Mm-hmm. He looked where, good. Where he looked good. Yep. I really like how he looked in the preseason. I think he gives that offense much more. He, they should open up the playbook more. Yeah. Because of his ability to run. Hopefully won't give up as many sacks because of his mobility. Yes. And maybe it helps Jonathan Taylor because, man, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just going to go with. Sam Ellinger in his first start because I want it to go well. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I'm just going to go with Washington in this game just because I think it's close enough. Um, they did pre- They played well against Green Bay. Yeah, their their defense is getting better. They're starting to get into more of a rhythm. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about like Jonathan Taylor is also due for a get right game, so that might be tough. Play Sam Howe, please. That please. would be nice. <laughs> Sam versus Sam. San Francisco at the Rams. Rams coming off their bye. San Francisco, after basically beating the Rams and then looking really good for a little while, have lost their last two straight games. Yeah, they um, lost to the they they blew out the 49ers and they I mean they blew out the Panthers and they lost to the Falcons and Chiefs. Yeah. Um Chiefs, you can't really blame them too much, but they just didn't look good at all. They do have Christian McCaffrey now for a full week of practice. We didn't even get to talk about that trade, but McCaffrey got traded for a bunch of picks. Craziness. Perfect system, in my opinion. So it'll be real interesting to see how they use all their weapons um, now in this game. And the Rams, they have to win. Like, this is a must-win game for them, or they are in a lot of trouble. I'm going to go with San Francisco because I love to see L.A. fall. I can't go with the Rams. I can't. It seems like every bit of mojo they had is gone. Mm-hmm. And it's just Cooper Cup or bust. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and like, every time they complete a good pass to Allen Robinson, the fans go crazy, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. Um, I don't know if they're getting Van Jefferson back this week, but that might help them. They need him. <laughs> uh, they need him. The Cam Akers thing is wild. I don't know. It's I love seeing L.A. fall. It, just one of those things i just don't like them as a franchise the fact that they like they barely have a fan base they're fake fans sports yeah sports barely matter in that city Mm -hmm. i just 
that that's part of why I don't like LA sports. Here's another: Why have teams been so eager to move to LA so much when the fan market just isn't? It's money. Man, I can't stand. Money. I can't stand the way sports are going. But I mean, the opponents' crowds are usually bigger in LA. Yes. Giants at Seahawks. This is a really fun matchup. The Giants have only lost one game. Yeah. Daniel Jones had a great game last week. Saquon Barkley is healthy and back. He he looks better than he did his he is it's it's hard to put into words. How Brian good he Dayball is, right is being creative. The cuts he makes Barry Sanders esque cuts. Mm-hmm. Like it it looks like he's moving faster than everybody on the field when he's like jumping around. It's crazy with Saquon. Yeah. And Daniel Jones is like I think he's close to Lamar Jackson in terms of like rushing yards for the yeah. season. I it's feel crazy. like Brian Dable is using Daniel Jones the way he's meant to be used. Yes. Get him running a little bit. Don't force him into too many crazy throws. Now they have Wandale Robinson healthy. They can do like short dink and dunk stuff. They've used Saquon in direct snaps. Like they're being creative. It's it's actually fun to watch the Giants. As weird as that is to say. And Seattle, they're starting to lose their thunder a little bit. Are Just they? a little bit. I, I Are think you so. Sure? I think so. Well, I, I don't think either of us think they're a Super Bowl contender. No. But I just I have belief in Gino has what they shown are, I have belief in what they're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. But I think Gino has simmered a little bit. Like he had a really hot start. Not that I expected him to keep it up necessarily, but he's he started to show some, He's still statistically one of the better quarterbacks in the right. league this year, which is insane. Yeah. And it sounds like DK Metcalf avoided a serious injury, so he should be okay to go in this game. I'm just gonna keep we'll keep riding the wave. That's the uh, theme of this week. Giants. Kenneth Walker has 67 carries for 411 yards. Yeah, it's been touchdowns. it's been kind of insane. He had a 74 yard to touchdown last week. Um, towards the end of the game, uh, it's been nuts. I'm gonna ride with the Giants too. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pick them to go seven and one. Green Bay at Buffalo. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. What a universe we are in right now. Aaron Rodgers choosing to re-sign that big contract was not smart. I don't think he thought that one all the way through. Trade deadline. Now now he just has to deal with a bunch of rookie receivers. Trade deadline. Aaron Rodgers gets traded. Where? I don't know. Flip him and Russ. (laughs) (laughs) The original plan in Denver apparently was to get Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I'm sure Denver would probably be a winning team if he was there right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a weird universe we live in. Yeah. Cincinnati at Cleveland. Cincy. Yeah, these afternoon games are not as exciting. I'm going with Cincinnati as well. They looked so good last week. They looked like the team everybody thought they were. I guess the last two weeks, like Joe Burrows got back on track. And Cleveland's defense is nowhere near as good as I thought they might be. Their entire, everything they had a few years ago seems to be falling off. And yeah. Kevin Stefanski isn't doing that great either. Which I'm glad that, you know, Cleveland, if they lose like a couple more games, they're basically out of the playoffs, which is great. Because I would, I, I didn't like the idea of like Deshaun Watson being back and maybe being able to get them in the playoffs. I just, I, f- I forget every week that he's out. coming back at some point. Yeah. Week 12, isn't it? I know it's uh, at Houston. Yeah. It's like 12 or 13. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. That Not is week 12. Okay. Not week 12. So I think it's 13 then. Okay. Uh, that's our week eight picks. That's everything going on in the NFL and things like that. Um, it's going to be a fun weekend. Like I said, Michigan, Michigan State. And we got NFL stuff. Next week, more Pistons updates. Smaller, a uh, little bit bigger NBA sample size. We can talk about some more things. We'll go over the Michigan, Michigan State stuff. Go over our picks. See where we're at. But this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Who's in a worse spot right now? Russell Wilson or Russell Westbrook? Which Russ has it worse? Debated next time.